Hello again, Unky Tongs. Thought I'd do a city talkie with you rather than the usual walkie talkie as it's raining and I don't fancy getting wet. Anyway, the far right. My goodness, where do we start with that one? I've been called far right so many times I can't remember. Uh, I've been called all sorts by the uh, lunatic lefties that come onto my channel to try and uh, destroy me, but they've all failed miserably. <laughs> um, now, I don't just converse with my viewers and subscribers in the comment section of my videos, but I do it on Twitter. I have loads of direct messages on there. I've yet to uh, open and respond to battle will and emails, especially uh, today, last night, a flurry of emails from viewers and subscribers who are concerned and they feel sickened about the way the country is going, especially after Rishi Sunak, the unelected prime minister's speech, outside Downing Street and it was advertised as something that was uh, meant to be of great concern etc but he pointed out what was going wrong in the country and he blamed it on the far right. Who are the far right exactly? What do you think of far right when somebody says those words? Do you see someone wearing a swastika, uh, silly little moustache, goose stepping everywhere? and making fun of non-Caucasians and being a bully to immigrants and being xenophobic, etc. Do you see a skinhead? Or do you see just normal people with valid concerns and opinions who have been wrongfully labelled and sometimes jailed for being so-called far-right? Take Sam Melia, for example. Now, Sam Melia is... I'm not sure if there's the husband or the partner of Laura Towler. They are prominent figures within Patriotic Alternative. If you don't know who they are, just look them up. It's an easy Google search, but don't rely on Google to tell you the truth about them. And he was jailed yesterday for something that wasn't illegal because the judge said what he did, the stickers he used to plaster everywhere, had nothing illegal on them. And yet they jailed him for two years. He'll do a year, then he'll be out. He'll do less than a year, then he'll be out on probation for the rest of that. And so he's been jailed and he leaves Laura Towler expecting and a kid as well for that. Now these stickers had on them words to the effect of uh, it's okay to be our demographic. You've got to be careful what I say here, for goodness sake. So much for free speech and context, unless the lefties use it, of course. And he plastered these stickers and he was uh, captured in a, in a physical raid while he was in a shop, I believe. All these anti-terrorism officers pinned him to the ground and carted him off. So he waited for a while, had a trial, and he was um, judged guilty, found guilty and sentenced to two years in prison for that even though the judge said nothing on the stickers was illegal. Make of that what you will. But saying it's okay to be our demographic is no worse than saying Black Lives Matter. Does it? It, it really it really doesn't. Looking at the wording of the, of the stickers, they don't call for violence or hatred at all. But it is what it is. It's happened. Um, my views on patriotic alternative remain the same as they did when I had a run-in with them, <clears throat> or some of them. I was approached to work with them, and I turned it down because alarm bells. But there we go, that's that. That's, I, I have my reasons. Uh, but for Rishi Sunak, back to Rishi Sunak now, to stand outside Parliament, point out everything that's going wrong, and blame the far right, it was... <laughs> Why won't they just address the elephant in the room? The elephant is huge and it's, it's staring them in the face. It's in Parliament. It stood between the left and the right, Labour and the Tories, in Parliament. And then what they're doing is they're looking underneath the elephant, through its legs, and blaming people that barely ex exist in this country. Barely exist. The real so-called far right. Well, they are real far right. They're the idiots currently serving jail time for plotting terrorist attacks against Jews and 
and whatnot, and they are insignificant people, troublesome little people who live in their mother's basement, and they're, they're only online anonymously, and that's it. They don't do anything. They're a teeny tiny minority. That's what they are. A teeny tiny minority, not a problem to anyone or anything. But what we find now is we have all decent, patriotic, conservative British people have been rounded up as this mythical far right because they need someone to blame for what's going on rather than acknowledge their own mistakes, their own politically correct mistakes. Wokeism hasn't worked. Political correctness hasn't worked. If anything, it has driven a wedge between people. It's not something that brings people together. It's quite... It's, it's a dangerous ideology. And it's this ideology that allowed George Galloway to be elected in Rochdale. I kept saying Rochester in my video yesterday. If you can hear whistling, that's one of my chickens snoring in the garden. I know it's nuts. She thinks she's a dog. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> George Galloway was uh, elected as the MP for Gaza in Rochdale by an ideology. And if you see the letter that was passed around, uh, distributed to voters, the constituencies in Rochdale, you will see it had some concerning eyebrow-raising wording. The hateful Labour leader Keir Starmer, God wills it. Words like that. Which tells me he was voted in on a, uh, a religious ticket, wouldn't you? God wills it. Who writes stuff like that? Honestly, why? Why in secular Britain we have a a guy now in Parliament voted in on a uh, extreme religious ideology. It's concerning, and that's what these emails and messages are are telling me. And I, I completely believe them. I share their concerns. I really do. God knows where this country is going now. I really don't know. But when an unelected prime minister stands there on Downing Street and blames the far right. It's just toilet politics. Toilet politics. The guy hasn't an absolute clue. He really doesn't. He stood there and, apart from blaming the far right, the so-called far right for everything, he kind of acknowledged that his party is done for. The Tories are done for. They really are. It's going to be a Labour victory at the next general election. But not being a doomsayer or being um, negative, it's facts. Nobody's voting in the Conservatives anymore. Labour have won nearly every by-election going so far, and the Reform Party haven't done anything. They really haven't done anything. They are just... It's, it's, a, it's a wasted vote, if you ask me. You, you can vote for it as a protest, but it won't be enough. It really won't be enough. And I'm not telling you to vote for any of the big parties. I'm not voting at all. I know you're saying, I know people are going to say, well, if you don't vote, you can't say anything. Well, I can. It's my right not to I don't have to vote. This isn't North Korea. Well, I have to vote, vote a certain way. Turn out and vote or I get shot. Or my family gets killed along with me. This is so far a free democratic country and I don't have to vote. Nobody represents me anymore in politics. Nobody whatsoever. I am politically homeless. And now we have the rise of uh, religious political parties. A religious political party is going to happen, folks. A religious political party. And the ideology backing it will be given a free ride and be allowed to behave as it does because of politicians like Keir Starmer, politicians like Rishi Sunak, the woke lefties, the left waffer, turning a blind eye. And then that's it, it's game over. And it's the far right who, or the so-called far right, uh, concerned British citizens who are pointing this out, are getting the blame for everything. It wasn't the so-called far right that attacked uh, MPs, that forced them 
to vote a certain way on Gaza the other week, was it? It wasn't the far-right mob who attacked MPs' homes. It wasn't the far-right um, that killed that MP. I'm not talking about Joe Cox, by the way. And if Thomas Meyer was far-right, then... I, I don't know. Maybe he was a, obviously a lone wolf if he was. But still, it's, it's all very sketchy. The whole thing's sketchy as fuck. It really is. It's not the far right that are doing protest marches calling for the eradication of Jews from Israel and Palestine, is it? No. You know who it is. And we're not allowed to talk about it because we're called far right if we do. That's the tale of the tape. Unfortunately, anyway, I know it's all doom and gloom, but I'm bringing you the truth, folks. I really am. What would you rather I talk about? Uh, I don't know. Little elves in rainbow land playing with unicorns? Because it's a lie. The world isn't like that. The world is a nasty place. The good things that happen in this world are few and far between. They really are. We can't have a world like that because we are distracted with conflict, fighting each other, and especially this ideology now, which is going to take a lot of effort. It really is a lot of effort. Otherwise, we're all doomed. Think of your children. Think of your kids. Anyway, that's it. I'm off to bed. Oh God, look at that stuff on my moustache. It's like I'm in the Blair Witch Project, isn't it, like that? <laughs> right, I'm past 49. Thanks for listening. Um, until the next time, Roger Trout.